All right, let, let's talk about the team that I think has, uh, in my mind, maybe more question marks than any other team in the division. And that's the Indianapolis Colts. And so they, they were seventh in rushing yards per game. They were able to run the football. They have a great offensive line. Uh, they ended the 2019 season with a PFF graded third best offensive line. They are PFF's number one offensive line heading into 2020. You know, we know that Phillip Rivers, the Chargers, uh, they ranked first, third, and 11th in backfield targets over the past three seasons. This was not on a team that only had backfield targets. You had Keenan Allen, you had Mike Williams, you had Hunter Henry. You had the ability to throw the ball downfield to Travis Benjamin. He still prefers to throw the ball to the running back position. One of the questions that a lot of people have is whether Jonathan Taylor is going to be involved in that capacity. Not a lot of catches in at the collegiate ranks. Pro Football Focus credited him with eight drops on 50 catchable passes. Um, people, I think he could. He could end up in that role, but they have a very dynamic pass catcher in Naeem Hines. And they have two running backs on first and second down that are very good. Marlon Mack is a very good runner. He's He had over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, had the fourth most rushing first downs in the league. And so it's just a matter of when and if Jonathan Taylor represents that fantasy gold for your team. And when you draft him in the third round, you are dependent on Jonathan Taylor. So whether he's overhyped or not, I can't see the future. I don't know if Marlon Max is going to get banged up. I don't know if Taylor is going to get enough passing game work. My prediction is that he won't put you in a position where you're happy you're dependent on him in the first half of the season. And I think we all agree with that. The, the The beginning of the season, Jonathan Taylor is going to be splitting first and second down work with Marlon Mack and then probably does not project this year to be the pass-catching guy. Well, while I love Jonathan Taylor, and if you want him, you're going to have to draft him in the third. I think at the end of the year, they're going to realize that as good as Marlon Mack is, Jonathan Taylor is a, you know, he's he's just a different level of human. He's 226 pounds, ran sub 4'4". Four, four. He is, he's just something that you can't replicate uh, with another with another guy. And I, I do think he'll win the job and be really good for fantasy towards the second half of the season. I don't usually like drafting guys that are going to be better in the second half and worse in the first half. I want to get off to a hot start, make sure I make the playoffs. You can't win a championship if you don't make the playoffs, uh, no matter how good your team is at the end of the year. So uh, I, I do see what you're saying in the overhyped because he's a third-round pick, um, and it, you might get off to a slow start. And but the, the offensive line, man, it, we focused on it, but you can't undervalue what that means for – a, for running backs and a good running back like that's this this is Zeke stuff to me I, I'm not, I'm fine making that comp this is this is Zeke possibilities for Jonathan Taylor where Zeke would have come in and he would lead the league in rushing yards per game he didn't really get past we had the one season where he really got off on uh, a whole bunch of receptions but before that Zeke was dominant, one of the most consistent running backs, if not the most consistent running back for fantasy purposes, because he's good, like really, really good, and his offensive line was fantastic. So I it, it the the third round, the end of the third round is very tough. Running back twenty one, though, is when you it doesn't put it in sound line, so bad when you say it yeah, like that. Yeah, when you say running back twenty one in context, it's it's not so bad. It's <sighs> It's well, just I, the the it, upside of what Jonathan Taylor could be compared to guys, compared to like the the people who are being drafted as running back twenty, running back twenty two. You know, right around him, the range of outcomes that ceiling that Jonathan Taylor could hit is is, is astronomically high for me. You know, Marlon Mack is a player that is completely ignored in fantasy drafts because of the situation he's in, where where you know that. He's not going to get all of the work, and Jonathan Taylor's the future. Uh, are you both hands off on Marlon Mack in the eighth round, where no. it's just like no upside? No, no, cer certainly not. And the same for Damian Williams, where it's the exact same situation of uh, for running backs in Kansas City. I love Edwards Alaire. I think this, this I, I can make the same argument of yeah his ceiling, but you have to make room for what if. 
what if you're wrong? And like the fact that you can grab Marlon Mack and Damian Williams, who very well could be the starter for the first four to six games, if not more, for their for their teams, then yes, I'm 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 willing to draft him at running back thirty eight. Would you actively look to target Jonathan Taylor as that third running back? Yes, I, I, I was actually going to say when when you guys were talking about um, y- you know he's going in the third round and how uh, roster construction matters here. I think Jonathan yeah. Taylor is if you want to go running back, running well, back, you go super running high back. Tea? Yes, if you go running back, running back, running back, and he's your third running back, and you've got two solid guys already on the roster, and then flood your lineup with you know, quality value at wide receiver the rest of the way until maybe grabbing a handcuff late. That's how I end up with Jonathan Taylor on one of my redraft teams is that type of a strategy. And, and I think I'm going to be happy by the end. You know, I know he wasn't a a first round pick. He wasn't a top 10 pick, you know, like, like these Zeke's and Saquon. So obviously that's why he's not being drafted in the first round, but you do have to keep in mind the Colts didn't have a first round pick and they, and, and when they, when they used their pick on Michael Pittman, they were really close to getting Jonathan Taylor there. They just wanted to get Phillip Rivers another receiving option. And then when Jonathan Taylor went a couple more spots, they traded up. They traded back up to get Jonathan Taylor with their draft capital. He was only nine spots behind uh, Clyde edwards alaire So the, the you're draft making, capital... You're making the point that their investment was very high. At yes. the it's, Colts, about a, it's, yeah, about as, it's high as high as you can, can get. get. Yeah, I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You made it to me. Click the subscribe button and see more of me.